Some days, like on Saturday morning, for example, I wish I could have Jesus' power. Like many of you, I wake up, I go to my living room, I drink my coffee, and I begin to read my newspaper on my iPad. Can we still call it a newspaper when it's on an electronic tablet? Anyway. I do all of this while I'm still waking up, and then my five years old storm into the room, jump on me, ask me to turn on the TV. Uh, the dog also jump on the couch and, and lie down at the junction of my, my head and my shoulder, just, just here, and start to lick my hair. All of this happened in less than five seconds. Those days, I wish I could just turn and said, quiet, be still, and there would be a dead calm right away. I tried. I'm no Jesus. Yep. <laughs> nope. It had been a very long day for Jesus. Previously, a large crowd had gathered around him to the point he had to get into a boat. And from there, Jesus thought about the kingdom of God. And when the evening had come, Jesus needed a break. He said to the disciples, let's go to the other side, to the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee. But unfortunately, a great storm arose suddenly. The disciples went down, uh, were doing their best, but the waves were filling their boat and the, uh, with water to the point that they were sure they would die. Desperately, they turned to Jesus and most likely said, Are you kidding me? Like, really, we're trying to keep this boat from being swallowed by the sea, and Mister is sleeping on a cushion. If this boat goes down, he's going down with us. Doesn't, does he not care about this? What is he thinking? Get up, get up, Jesus, and save us now. Jesus woke up and said, <sighs> Peace, be still, and then turn to the disciple. What's your problem, guys? Don't you believe in me? And the disciple wonder, who's that guy? The story of Jesus calming the storm makes a very powerful statement about his true nature. Jesus can exercise power over animated and unanimated element of God's creation. The Son of God is Lord of all. He would protect his disciple against the perils they could face, all of them, like a windstorm. And this is wonderful. This is great. It's just, it's just that when we think about it, there's something not quite right in this story. It is just that for men who were, we're told in the gospel, seasoned fishermen, who were supposed to be used to navigate by night on the Sea of Galilee to catch uh, their fish in order to sell them on the seashore by the morning, and who must have been through many windstorms before that day. The disciple total panic over the weather condition is somehow surprising. One would assume these fishermen should know what to do in those situations, besides expecting a carpenter to save the day. And, and there's something here, like also like after witnessing Jesus' powerful deeds, why the disciple 
are so surprised by the fact their master could stop a single storm after he, he healed people and cast out demons. Were they not paying attention when all of those miracle and great events happened? No, there's, there's something that does not compute here. We, we must miss something. We ought to be something else in this story. Well, many Christians across the ages believe there's, this story is a metaphor. The boat in the storm is an allegory of our life. Sometimes we sail on dead, calm waters, but once in a while we find ourselves in the middle of a storm and we feel that Jesus is asleep. Others highlighting the fact that the text uh, from the Gospel uh, according to Mark was written for a community that must have felt like the crew on the storm-tossed ship facing persecution and feeling small against powerful and unfriendly forces. The story could also relate to the situation of today's church that is facing yet another crisis, another storm, and this time we're afraid that we would end up sinking and drowning for good. Maybe we're reminded through the story to trust Jesus when we're in the midst of a crisis. We need his help to remain afloat. We have to have more faith in him. But sometimes Sometimes I wonder if we completely miss the point of this morning's story. What if we're trying to make it more complicated than it actually is? It is believed that Sigmund Freud said, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Okay, he might not have actually have said it, but it's, it's still a good quote, okay? What if the point of today's passage does not revolve around the storm, but the boat. And what if the boat is just a boat, a traveling vessel that helps people to move from one place to another to get us from point A to point B? We need to remember geography. In this in this story because it plays an important part we could miss much by overlooking this significant aspect Jesus you see Jesus and his disciples were living and traveling in the village of Capernaum and Magdala and Tiberias and Jesus wants to take his disciple from these villages and neighborhood into Gentile territory. He asked them to leave a place they knew very well and to journey to another space where they be confronted to otherness. Maybe the disciples have been on the other side before, maybe not. Regardless if they have done it or not, I'm pretty sure they all knew it was not like home on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The people over there were not like them. They were different. And by saying, let's go across the other sea, Jesus invited his disciples to get out of their comfort zones and move out into unfamiliar territory. I don't know about you, but for most of us, when offered choice, we would rather stay where we are. I really believe it's part of our human nature. It's always easier to remain in what is known and understood, even when sometime what is known has become harmful or unsustainable. Uh, for example, um, 
We know our cars are bad for the environment, and we know there are better alternatives out there, but we still drive them because we know how it works, we understand, we know what to expect. It's all so true when it comes to traveling. We might love to travel and to discover new realities, but to a certain point. We all have our limits. We all reach a point when we begin to doubt, to second guess, to question the values, the timing, the wisdom of the journey ahead of us. When Jesus invited his disciples to cross to the other side, I don't think many of us would be surprised to read that some said something like, I don't know Jesus. I need to think about it. Is it, is it the right time to do this? Is it the right? Is it right? Well, let us check the weather before. Or what if there's a storm? Or any other excuses to avoid getting in that boat? This is maybe why Jesus does not give the disciple any time to think about the trip, because they probably would think about it forever. And Jesus does not give them also the time to ask, well, first, Jesus, tell us what's on the other side. What is so wonderful, what is so important that for us to get there? Well, if we cheated a little, and look at the following chapters in the Gospel according to, to Mark, we would discover that he cast out demons from a madman living in cemetery. Well, had Jesus told them this, the disciple would have probably replied, well, we have plenty of deranged men where we are right now, there's no need to look for others. Why should we go, go over there when we have so many already here? Well, Jesus was not really interested in the final destination as much as he was looking to bring the disciple on the journey of discovery. He wanted them to get in the boat in order to change their perspectives on things. How many times have we faced a, a challenge, not knowing what to do because it was very difficult, and then by turning it upside down, we find a solution? How many times have we discovered something totally unexpected on a beloved painting, for example, by moving our head just a few centimeters? How many times have we found something totally new by looking at it from a different perspective? The disciples have been following Jesus for a while. Maybe they believe they had figured it all. And then something drastic, something unexpected happened. And they gain a new perspective on their master. The disciple began to, to see Jesus differently. Who is that man? They ask. And what does it mean about us if we're following him? Well, they did not figure this out immediately. It takes time to get used to a new reality. It takes time to change our perspective about others and also about ourselves. Transformative journeys are never smooth or easy trips. They come with a fair load of, of challenges, of change, of discoveries, and trading spaces with one another, and getting on the other side 
often means accepting to leave behind what is known, what is love, what is reassuring, and to go into the unknown and unpredictable. It is an unsettling perspective. It is a disconcerting invitation the disciple received that day. And yet we should notice that Jesus did not say, you go over there, you go to the other side. But he said, let us go to the other side. Jesus was there all along. And no matter what Jesus was doing, whether he was preaching about the kingdom of God or sleeping on a pillow, he was there. There are moments of doubts. The theologian Frederick Buchner reminds us that Jesus will be always with us in our various journeys. He wrote, Christ sleeps in the deepest selves of all of us. And in whatever, we, in whatever way we can call on him, as the fishermen did on their boat, to come awake within us and to give us courage, to give us hope, and to show us, each one, our way. May he be with us, especially when the winds go mad and the waves run wild, as they will for all of us before we're done, so that even in their midst, we might find peace, we might find Him. At one point or another in our lives, we are invited to take a journey to the other side of what is known, of what is comfortable. And on those moments, we need to have faith but not necessarily faith that Jesus will always still the storm. We need to have faith that we were never meant to, say, to stay safely and predictably in the arbor. We need to have faith that gets us into that boat. We need to have faith that reaching another side is not just only possible, it is essential for us to do. We need to have faith that there's something to discover on our way to the other side. And Jesus knows about it, and Jesus is journeying with us during the whole process. Most of the time, the hardest things for most of us is to getting in that boat. And yet, that's the best way at our disposal. That's the way we can change perspective on life. That's the best way we can discover new realities. That's the best way we have to find peace and stillness, even on a crazy Saturday morning. Amen.